Hersam Acorn and HANradio.com. Welcome back to Ridgefield Summerfest, HANradio.com. I'm Rob Adams, John Kovach still here, Kate Chaplinski, Donald Eng both stepped out for a moment. But I teased some hockey news, John, when we began the broadcast this morning, and uh, boy, am I I'm excited. I am too. Great news for hockey fans such as us. And coming off of an event as special as the Big Assist Wednesday night. Absolutely. Th- this is a nice surprise for a Saturday morning. A really great surprise as we're joined by Bruce Bennett of Bruce Bennett Nissan right down the road, of course, here in Wilton. And uh, Bruce, you've got some huge news on the hockey front I, for I us. Have, I have great news. Uh, we were able to put a lease together with the help of uh, the mayor of Danbury and uh, with the owners of the arena, and once I had gotten that accomplished and just getting to the, the uh, franchise league and making sure that I could pick up the team, we were able to do that, and we were very, very excited. So now it will be the Danbury Titans. Yes. So it's a new team, and for those who don't know, there were the Danbury Whalers in Danbury. They have moved to Brewster, New York, the uh, Brewster Ice Arena, right across the line, almost into Westchester County in Croton Falls, just about. So they will be now the state line team and a new Danbury team. Let me... Well, there's the, more to it than that, of course. There's more to it. <laughs> Let me do this. Hold well, on. Well, here, here's what, what's happened. The league, um, it, I'm not going to say is fragile, but there's a couple of teams that had some problems with right. leases. There was one up in Watertown. And because what's happened is the, the, um, the uh, league has grown, the fan base has grown, and now we need bigger stadiums, better, bigger arenas. So um, Watertown City had committed to fix their stadium up and they had another 1,000 seats or whatever. And the same thing happened in Berkshire. So you had two teams that had dropped out. There was another problem in Danville, Ohio. So we're looking to put teams in. Um, I'm, I'm not sure exactly why the, uh, the Whaler previous owners, they were to start the team and Brewster left, but there was a void there. Right. And... Um, I, I, actually, I, I love the opportunity. I think the crosstown rivalry between, and the name is the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the, uh, <clears throat> that's not good, is, is the, uh, You're fine. the Brewster Bulldogs. Oh, okay. And that's a new new name, and we just picked it last week. We have a schedule in place, so um, I will own that team and uh, along with the Titans. Oh, so you'll own both. So there's no state line. It's it's now the Brewster Bulldogs. Wow! So the news is really <laughs> fresh here. Wow! Yeah, so we'll have so you you will own both Brewster and Danbury. Correct. Crosstown rivals. Correct. And of course the play by play voice in my brain is going. I've got two teams to talk to you <laughs> about now. My voice. So this is this is uh, <clears throat> of course it's great news for hockey fans yeah. throughout this region. And now, especially you know the Brewster fans. That's a great arena. Yeah. I, I've never been there. Maybe. 15 years ago, I brought my kids there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's 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 a class act place. It's 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 a junior league, it's a women's league. Um, um, it's a great arena. It's a little it's less in in seating capacity than we have in right, Danbury, right. but we're going to add on to it. But it's a it's a great opportunity. Now this is East Coast mm. Hockey League. Or no, this is federal hockey federal, league, federal which hockey. is a step right. below, and then that feeds the East Coast Hockey League, Correct. Exactly which right. feeds the American Hockey League, Correct. which feeds the National Correct. Hockey League. Correct, exactly right. Why jump into hockey? Very, very good question. I uh, I went to a hockey game three years ago. Prior to that, I've never I didn't know what a puck was. Uh, you know, we're football family, we're baseball family, we're soccer family. And I tell you, I fell in love, not only myself, but my wife, too. My wife's a real sports lady and um we we've got to meet the players and when you meet these young guys that are 20 years old to 25 and some are older that that put their lives on the line to play hockey i just fell in love with the whole thing and um i have some things going on within my dealership right now i'm getting my son more involved todd's going to be running the store uh, and I'm going to have some free time, and I can't wait. So with that, my wife would say to me, what are you going to do, look at the birds? And I said, no, I don't think so. So anyway, it's perfect, perfect timing for Bruce. Just talk to us about Nissan. Uh, Nissan right now is no definitely, it's a hot franchise. We have New Maximo, we have New Murano, the Rogue is hot. Um, you know, right now in the auto industry, auto world, because now global, it's all about market share. And I've always believed that if you're with a franchise that's on the wave and they're looking to grow market share, you're in good shape as a dealer. And Nissan right now has a focus that that's what they want to do. 
uh, you know, we have Honda in our sights. Um, we have Toyota in our sights. They are definitely doing uh, a great job of new product on a faster turn, where before it will be a five-year run of Altima. God, now I get a new Altima or, or, or skin change three years. What so. are some of the hot models in Nissan coming up this uh, model year? Well, coming up this model year, believe it or not, the Titan pickup. Really? Isn't that something? I just so happened to name the team. Trucks are back. Trucks are back. Well, this is a diesel-powered, full-size Titan pickup truck, which is um, which is very exciting. Other than that, the Maxima, which I have one here, mm, beautiful the Maxima right is a yeah. beautiful, beautiful that car. Is. I started driving one, and you know, people that that own Maximas, they love it. They they hate to give them up. This car is something that they would enjoy. I, I I can vouch for that, guys. My wife bought a Nissan Maxima in 2000. Uh, we just had to let it go last year, and there were some there were some tears shed. That that, yeah. that, that, that car has been to Montreal yeah. and Toronto. It's been out to yeah. it's been out to Kentucky. Yeah. It, it was down as far south as yeah. Cordell, Georgia. That was Georgia. a great year car. It was spectacular. Yeah. It was the, the SE yeah. with the five speed. Couldn't beat it. You never should have gotten rid of that car. That's the one. <laughs> see these I'm, cars? I'm up? sorry. <laughs> see the one? The cars lined up at the car show. The, was it black? Uh, charcoal. Charcoal. That car is a collectible car that will be on the line someday of collectible cars. That's that's terrific. Well, it's all, it's not a collectible, but there is a peacock blue uh, Nissan Versa note sitting in one of the lots down there that yeah. uh, uh. Mr. Sean Adams and I drive around in. So, <laughs> yeah. Bruce, thank you so much sure. for thank, coming thanks over. Thanks for having me it's out here. Yeah, great to it. chat with you, and yeah. we'll be chatting yeah. a lot yeah. more. Let me just thank the uh, the uh, town of Richfield for putting this on. This is a great day, and look at all the people out here. It's just Great. Rain went away. It's a good day. Rain went away. Congratulations. Okay, good. We're excited.